Okay, here we go. All right. I can start now. I see yeah. the red light on. There you go. Yeah, all right. This is about a little interesting uh, event that took place in La Habra when I was living down there with my family. Anyway, I, I was sent off to the library to get out of the way of uh, housekeeping chores. And uh, when I came back, I was all uh, covered in dust and sort of mud. And my wife said to me, what happened to you? And I said, well, I got knocked over by an elephant. And there was a long pause. And she says, oh, sure. But you really got knocked over by an elephant. And I said, well, actually, it's true. Uh, I said, I was at the library, and uh, when I came out of the library, there was a couple of elephants on the lawn. And she says, yeah, sure. And I said, no, uh, there's a circus in town, and they had them staked out at the uh, front of the library. There was a lot there. So when I went out the door, there was this elephant very close by. Uh, and so as I was walking down the, the walk, uh, he sort of put his trunk up in the air and sniffed and then uh, uh, sort of ambled over to me, took a look at me, and then swung his trunk at me. And he hit me basically on the arm and uh, uh, sort of the chest and knocked me on my butt in the sand in the dirt. And then while I was wondering what the hell was going on, I, this guy came running over and asked me what I'd done to the elephant. And so I said, nothing. I just came out of the library. And he says, okay, well, all right. And so he grabbed, got his little poker and got the elephant back over to where he wanted him. And I, and I got up. And that was the story of what happened to me going to the library on a plain, ordinary day and getting knocked over by an elephant. What did the film look like when you got it back? What film? The picture of the elephant, the elephant closer, the trunk out of focus, the sky well, as you're falling backwards. I didn't have a picture of the elephant, unfortunately, but I had, uh, I, my hat was sort of messed up too because I had a hat on when I was coming out of the library. So, anyway, it was pretty interesting to go to the library and run into an elephant in the middle of town where nobody would expect an elephant to be. Okay, cool. Right, so that's my elephant story. All right, we're going to transition straight into rescuing the hummingbird at the library. Well, animals and I seem to get along in various different ways. And uh, I, one of the ways that I, I used to spend my time, this was in Santa Maria, and uh, when I got a little fed up with work and all the rest, I could head down to the library. So I, this one day I took off and sat around uh, picking up books to read, which was my thing to do. And then while I was sitting there, and I don't remember her name, but it was one of the nice dear old librarians uh, I noticed was running back and forth, literally running back and forth uh, on her short little legs, uh, holding a bouquet of flowers. Now, I had worked in a mental institution uh, some time before, and it really raised my curiosity as to what this woman was running up and down the library aisles for, carrying a pot with flowers in it. So I watched her for a few minutes, then I realized she was chasing this hummingbird. And the hummingbird was flying back and forth up the different aisles and she was running after it with a flower pot with the flowers in it. And so I asked her what she was trying to do and she said she was trying to catch the bird. And I said, well, okay, let me help. So, never having tried to catch a hummingbird before, I thought, hmm, I don't know how you get, I'm going to do this. But I got up and I looked around, and at this point, the hummingbird had 
scuttled down one of the aisles, and she was too short to reach very high. So I walked down the aisle, and I thought to myself, what does a hummingbird want to do when it can't perch anywhere? And I said, it would perch in a tree. And then it came to me, and I thought, okay, I'll become a tree. So I put my finger out, and along comes a hummingbird, zips and sticks on my finger, and then I pinched its poor little feet, and I had caught my hummingbird. And she says, oh, how wonderful. We can, will you please let it go outside? So I went over to the exit, put the hummingbird outside, let it go, and another hummingbird came zipping along with it, and that was the hummingbird story. So whenever I came back to the library, uh, this woman said, oh, here's the hummingbird man. <laughs> Some things you never live down. Thanks. <laughs> okay, so then the perfect follow-on for that story is rescuing the pelican, another bird. Yes. Uh, I, I was working in uh, Santa Maria and I'd driven all the way down to uh, Santa Barbara and I had been checking in at the different oil fields on the way down and it was lunchtime so I parked my car in the Goleta Beach area just to take a break and as I drove in, I noticed that there was a group of people there in a barbecue. So I get out and I looked around, and sure enough, it was a free barbecue because this guy was running for office, uh, actually for the State Board of Education. So I thought, well, this is good enough, all right. And it's a free lunch. So I stopped and had my free Santa Maria style barbecue lunch and while I was uh, sitting there I uh, finished up my lunch thank you very much and I walked over and I noticed that there was this circle of people and I thought well I wonder what's going on I didn't I, I expected this guy to be in the middle giving a speech but when I got there instead of the guy being in the middle doing the speech was a pelican and I thought, well, that's interesting. wonder why the pelican's there. So I look at the pelican, and it's got something stuck in its throat. And I can hear it going, grrr, 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 stretching its neck up and down. And I thought, well, this is, bird's got a problem. And I look around, and this another fat little old lady is dancing up and down oh my god oh my god I killed the pelican and uh, I thought well no it's not quite dead yet so I look at it and when I get I get a little better look at it it looks like there's thing barbs going down that won't let whatever it is go down its throat so I'm standing there and looking at the pelican and this guy beside me hippie looking guy uh, he's standing there and says oh geez that's terrible and I said yeah and then the pelican walks over and stands in front of me about two feet away and this guy says to me you gotta help it I said what do you mean I gotta help it he says you gotta help it, it came to you and I looked and I thought oh it does have something stuck so Without thinking too much, I grabbed the pelican by the neck just below this bulge. And I noticed that this thing popped up, so I grabbed it again, and this thing popped up again. And I said to the guy beside me, I said, when it opens its beak, you grab whatever it is. So, and the stuff bloops up into its pouch. The guy reaches in, grabs this hunk of salmon with big bones in it. And I let go of the pelican, and it stands there for about two or three seconds, sort of bobs up and down, and uh, turns around and runs and starts to fly away. Of course, then everybody cheers. And I thought, okay, and he says, man, 
how'd you know what to do? I said, well, I didn't, you know. That was the first thing that came into mind. This poor little old lady came out. She says, oh, you are so wonderful. Uh, in Israel, when I gave them the, the fish, I had no problem with this one. I had a problem with. And I said, yeah, that's too bad. And she says, oh, you must be a doctor. And I said, yeah, ma'am, I'm a doctor. And she says, oh, that's so wonderful. What kind of doctor are you? And I said, well, obviously, I'm a pelican doctor. <laughs> and she says, oh, that's so wonderful. You should be here at this time. I said, yes, ma'am. You know, I always try to be around pelicans. <laughs> and the guy like, beside me says, are you kidding? <laughs> I said, oh, no, no, uh, I'm a pelican doctor. That's my trade. Uh, but now he's fixed. I think I'll go now. So I left. And with a crowd of people sort of gawking. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my pelican story. Real short. Yeah. But it didn't take much longer than it took to tell it. There you go. All right. So it was fun. Great. Well, thank you. You're welcome.